Hi, my name is Leela, and in this video, we're going to learn how to... Hey! How to do a split screen effect like that. Or like this. Or like this. Let's get started. The first split screen effect that we will be doing is the basic two panel split screen. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to place one clip on top of the other clip. And in this case, I'm going to place this one on V2 and this one right here on V1. Now don't mind this clip. This is the clip that we will be using for a three panel, which we'll do after this one. So then we need to crop this video. So we're going to do that by looking up the crop effect right here in effects. If you don't see effects, then go to window and click on effects right here. So let's type crop and then click, hold and drag it to the top clip. And as you can see, now it has appeared right here in the effects controls panel. So now we need to pick our percentages and I'm going for a vertical panel, but you can also choose to go for a horizontal panel by changing the values of the top and the bottom values right here. But like I said, this is a basic two panel split screen. So we need half of the screen filled with one clip and half of the screen filled with the other clip. So if your subject is right in the middle, almost like this one, then what you can do is you can just add 25% to the left and the right value. Whatever you do when you work with a two panel split screen and you want half of the screen filled with one and half of the screen filled with another, you want to make sure that both of these percentages amount to 50 because that is half of the screen. So now it is time to reposition our clip and we do this by going right here to position under motion and just changing this value. Now a very handy tool when it comes to repositioning your clips is to use visual guides, which are basically lines that we can set to help us determine the center of the frame, for example. So in order to enable the guides, we first need to click right here on the program window and then go to view show guides. Mine is already enabled. And if you use guides more often, you can also go to the button editor right here. And this is the show guides button. Just click and drag that to your timeline, hit OK. And now you can just easily turn them on and off like so. But as you can see with this enabled, there is no lines because we still need to add our lines. So let's go back to view add guide. And then right here, you'll see position. Now the position is obviously the center of the frame. So this frame is 4096, which means that if we divide that by two, it's 2048. So that's what I'm going to enter. But if you're editing a regular 1080p clip that is in 16 by nine, your value will be 960. Then you can choose a color if you want. And the last thing that we need to check is to make sure that our orientation is vertical. Now you can also choose horizontal if you're going for a horizontal split screen. So now now the guide showed up right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move it slightly to this side and then I'm going to click on the clip below it and I'm going to reposition that as well. So now we're basically done. All we need to do is add a border. But before we add a border, I actually want to show you how I made the animation that I showed you in the beginning of this video. So for that, I'm going to have to click on this clip and then reset the crop effect and the position. And then we need to choose a point where we want the crop to start. I think this is a great place to start. So I'm going to enable the stopwatch right in front of right. And the reason why I'm only enabling right is because we're going to move it this way. So we only need to crop the right part of the frame. And then we also want to do the same for the position. So this is our starting point, which is great. And then we're just going to move through it. And then right about here, I wanted to only fill half of the frame. So I'm going to prop it a little bit and I'm going to move it to the side and I'm using the guide super easy like that. And now if we play through it, this is the result. So how do we add a border? Well, we can do two things. We can enable the pen tool by clicking right here or hitting P on our keyboard and then creating two points. And in this case, this guide right here is very handy too because now we can double check if the line that we made is straight but there is actually an easier way when it comes to straight lines and that is to use the rectangle tool this tool is a little bit hidden but we can find it if we click on the pen tool and hold it and then this little menu will pop up and we can click on the rectangle tool right here so now all we're going to do is we're going to move to the top or what you can also do is make the screen a little bit smaller so you can see it well and then just create a very slim rectangle like this. And then we can go back to fit. Now this looks great. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the effects controls panel. We're going to open the shape right here and we're going to change the fill to any color that you like. And then of course you want to make sure that it covers everything. So you want to cover it like that. However, in this case we animated it, but the line is not animated yet. So let's quickly do that. 
First, we're going to get our selection tool back by pressing V on our keyboards or clicking on the cursor right here. And then we're going to click on this clip that we animated and we're going to go to the last keyframe first because this is the end position and we just positioned the line here as well. And now we're going to click on our line layer right here, which is our graphic layer on V3. And we're going to go to effect controls and then enable the stopwatch in front of position. Now, as you can see, we've created a keyframe right here, which is our end position. So let's click on our clip again and then go to the previous keyframe by clicking on this arrow right here. Now all we need to do is click on the clip again and then just change the position, move it out of frame like so. Now if we play through it, it looks pretty good. So now that we know how to do this, let's quickly turn this into a three panel split screen effect. And this one is going to be quick because we already know the basics. So the first thing that I want to do is I actually want to select all of them like so and move them one track up. So we can take this third clip and we can put it underneath. Then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the second clip. So on V2, which is this clip right here, and we're going to resize it and reposition it. Now, again, you can use the visual guides to see where the midpoint is, but in this case, let's just, let's just wing it. Then when we're done with that one, we're going to do the same with the clip on V1, which is this clip right here. And the reason why I put this clip underneath is so that this clip can overlay it and this one as well. So it's just a little bit easier and a little less messy. A nice little tip right here is to click on motion so you can just drag the clip on the screen instead of having to change the values. Now this looks pretty good to me. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create another rectangle. So we click on the rectangle tool right here and then click on the selection tool again or press V on your keyboard and you're done. Okay, so finally we're going to create this really cool split screen effect and you can get as crazy and as creative as you want. So for this one, we're going to use different clips because I think we're all a little bit tired of my face by now. So I got these clips from Artgrid, which is a great stock footage website if you're looking for very cinematic, perfectly shot footage. And what we're going to do first is we're first going to layer the clips like we just did. And then what I like to do before we do anything else is just to reposition and kind of lay it out on the screen. All right, now it is time to create our first diagonal line and you can all do this with the crop effect. So instead we're going to mask it. If you've never done masking or you've never heard of masking before, that is totally fine because this is super, super easy. The first thing that we're going to do is make sure that you have your right clip selected. So in this case, it's this clip. Then go to effect controls right here and then under opacity, you see three little icons and we're going to use the pen tool. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make our screen small again and then create two points like so and then just close your shape. It doesn't need to be super nice. It can look a little bit messy because you don't see that. So let's go back to fit. I am going to reposition the mask a little bit more like so. I'm also going to reposition the clip a little bit. I think this looks nicer. Now, before we move on to the next clip, we're actually going to lower the mask feather to zero because what the mask feather does is it blurs the edges. And in this case, we want a very sharp edge. So let's set that to zero and then move on to the next clip. So the next clip is the clip of the ladybug and we're going to create a mask for this one as well. So again, go to opacity and use the pen tool. And if you want, you can reposition the mask and the position of the clip to make it all look nicely in frame. Okay, this looks pretty cool if you ask me. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to create lines. And for this one, we're going to use the pen tool. If you want, you can use the rectangle tool and then just change the rotation right here. But using the pen tool in this case is way easier and way faster. So I highly recommend that. So again, first we're going to switch to 25%. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create two points. I'm going to create a point right here and right here. If you want, you can do it in fit, but it just, as you can see, it just doesn't fit on the screen. And even if it isn't perfect, like it isn't here, it doesn't matter because we're going to go to the shape effect right here and we're going to enable stroke because then you can choose the thickness. Then we're going to create another line right here and then we're going to hit V to get our selection tool back and then move the graphics layer to fit the clips. Now that you've got the mask technique down, it is time to level up. So let's learn how to do a mask transition by clicking on the video right here.